Good morning, how are you? What a beautiful day. Isn't it beautiful out here uh, and where you are too? Um, the way we see this natural world is, is certainly our, our natural eyes, but also because of light. If we didn't have the light, we'd be sitting in the dark out here. Um, the sun, the S-U-N uh, sun that this earth revolves around <clears throat> is the center of the universe, we know. and It's a lot like Jesus is in our spiritual lives, the Son of God. Uh, but we really can't look at the sun, the S-U-N, but we can, by his light, or by the light of the sun, natural sun, we can see everything else. Uh, that is a sort of analogy of how Christ is in our life as believers. One of the greatest blessings we have is to know that he is the light of the world. Um, sometimes we have to go through the troubles, the tunnels of trouble, but there's always a light at the end of the tunnel, and that light is Jesus. And what light does is drive away darkness. This world has no light to offer us. If you watch the news much these days, you will just have a dark side of life. That's all that you hear about. Uh, it's something wrong with somebody else. And how you can uh, how you can hate somebody and why you should hate them. Um, well, the light of the world is Jesus. And I want to talk to you about that today because one of the amazing things of God's grace in saving us, he gives us light, but he, he, in doing that, he, he makes us something that we will be something, and that is light. That, that is a theme throughout the Bible. That's what God does to his people. He calls his people out of nature's darkness, and, and they become something. They become the light of the world. We can, we can be something worthwhile. We can be something eternal because of the light of the world, Jesus. Light is what gives us power and growth, just like in our natural world. The photosynthesis that the plants take up, that's from light. That's how they grow. And so spiritually, Jesus is our light. And I know you're familiar with these verses, but let's look at them together from the Sermon on the Mount and see the great influence that we have because of Christ. It's nothing we've done of ourselves. We were just vessels of his mercy that he has chosen to put light in. And he has given us, and, and, the, and the Lord Jesus gives two analogies of this influence of what God has done to us to make us be something. One is salt and one is light. But I want to particularly talk about light today. It says in verse 13 of Matthew chapter 5, ye are the salt of the earth. Notice he doesn't say you will be or you will you can be if you do this, that, and the other. It says you are the side of the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to cast out and to be trodden under foot of man. That is the danger when we lose our influence. The salt loses its influence. It's not good for anything. Just well throw it, throw it away. When the flower quits blooming, sometimes I, I'll. Uh, buy some flowers for penny and we'll put them in a vase on the table dining table but they don't last forever and when they're gone they go in the trash can uh, because they lost their influence uh, a christian should never lose his or her influence and we really we won't we we can't because we have an eternal light and saltiness about us that just makes us different and we need to see that purpose and to enjoy that and glorify God in it is to do as God calls us to do. Because as we notice here, he says in verse 14, ye are the light of the world. There it is again. Not how you get to be the light. This is what you have to do to be the light. You are. This is present tense. You are the light of the world. You know what? It really should encourage us and actually challenge us, make us, um, I guess, reverentially afraid afraid and the fearfulness of God to know that we are living in such a dark world and yet we are the light of the world and so what that means is we have the most gracious opportune time we've ever had before as Christians to light on darkness because that's what light does it's for dark times and now is the time to shine for Jesus it's time to let your light so shine and here's why. 
He says, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. When you have a light, you use it to light. The lights we have in our house and you have in yours for one thing, to shine. And, and you don't have a light and you just cover it up with a cloth and turn it on. You, you don't. That would be foolish. And so we as Christians don't need to cover our lives up. Satan will try to talk us into putting a bushel over our life by making us think of something we've done or said or thought or some inadequacy that we have. But listen, we all are inadequate, but he fulfills that. Uh, think about the lamp that has the wick and the oil. We have the oil and the wick. He is the, the oil. He's the Holy Spirit. That wick, we need to trim it in our practical everyday life as we uh, consider God's word every day, as we pray, as we uh, interact in this life with our relationship with others that God puts in our path, our families, uh, our churches, uh, and also the problems that we face. That, that's what we're lights for. And then verse 16 says this, and this is the reason for it all, let your light so shine before men, let it shine, uh, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. In other words, the light that God has given us. What is this? This is the, the blessings of God. This is the Holy Spirit. This is the passion that we have. This is the glow, the optimism that we have uh, that, that <clears throat> responds to whatever life we face in a most positive way. It's, it says there's hope. I believe that you can look in the eyes of a person and tell if they're a Christian or not because you can see the light of Jesus in their eyes. A Christian can always tell when you're in a dark place and darkness is surrounded. We need to be able to say with all affirmity that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior and that we need to say it with what we do that he is the most precious treasure that ever could be because that is a light. We can be sure the world is watching us especially in these dark times. So we're to let our light so shine, not to, to be a showman, not to be uh, uh, promoting ourselves, but to let the uh, reflected light of Jesus uh, illuminate <clears throat> others in our life so that they may see how great God is uh, by our good works. Now, the good works that we do are not so that we can go to heaven or impress God or anybody else. In fact, the most uh, despicable person to me is a person that is a fake Christian that just gives God lip service, uh, that knows a lot about God but doesn't really know God. Uh, and you can tell that. You can tell that because because they're not they're not in the world. They're not in uh, uh, in Christ uh, either seems like and, and they just they just struggle and they try to fake their way through life uh, a, a Christian to have light it's not it's not an effort we make it's something God has given us and so what we need to do is to be ourselves to be ourselves because when you're yourself as a Christian you're gonna be light and you're gonna be salt in other words you're gonna have a influence an influence for good whatever you do whatever your situation is I imagine that everybody I'm talking to today, you are more influential than you'll ever know. And, 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 I, and I see this a lot of times when I do funerals and, and you talk to families and people that knew these folks uh, that, that live these lives of faith and, and sure they have lots of struggles, but so many times, time and again and again, I hear people say, this person was meant so much to me. They did this, that, and the other. And things that they never told you they did but, but that's the light in them, and, and that's what keeps us going, that, that light, that positive uh, uh, affirmation that, that things are going to be all right. We do not need to be afraid to live life. Uh, we don't. We need to, we need to, uh, to be able to uh, live the kind of life that God has called us to live so that we have a love for life, and that that love for life illumines everything we do. It's the only way that we can approach what God says to do and whatever we do and whenever you do, do it, do it all for the glory of God. Right here, what is the glory of God? To let our light shine 
that by what we do, our good works, and, and by the way, anything that's a good work is what honors God. If it doesn't honor God, it's not a good work. Now, we know that we have no goodness in us because we are spiritually depraved because of uh, the sin that we have from our federal head, Adam. Uh, we all are sinners, born in sin, dead to sin, but Christ has quickened us and he's given us light. He's given us, he's equipped us with light. He's given us something to shine. He's given us something to show us how to walk in darkness. In fact, the, the Bible tells us that if you be in Christ, you shall not walk in darkness. We don't. Now, we, we, we have some darkness to deal with, but we don't have to walk in because we have, we have the light of Christ in our eyes. And even when things are dark, we still have that faith, that illumination, uh, so to speak, uh, inwardly, that, that even if it's things are dark outside, we, we have light. Uh, when Jesus says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, that, that goes with his light. He is the light of the world. Now, right now we know that Jesus is alive and he's living in heaven. He's seated at the right hand of God our Father and he's making intercession for us. And we can better well believe that intercession is about being light, being influenced. Being the light that God's called us to be is really a big deal. It really, uh, we need to think about that more. I think that's why the Apostle Paul forever was concerned about the kind of life he lived after God uh, quickened him, after God converted him. Uh, you remember he, he talks about uh, not wanting to be a castaway. Uh, said, so so he, he had this inward battle going on between the flesh and the spirit. And, and, and he didn't want to be a castaway. That's what his fear was. A castaway would be somebody that maybe their light is covered up, they have no influence, and, and neither do we, we don't. So uh, how, do we, how do we approach letting our light so shine? I think first of all, we just let it shine right where we are. We don't have to go out uh, necessarily to the mission field. It'd be all right to do that if God impressed somebody to do that. Uh, but, but I believe we're to shine right where we are. Um, I know my grandchildren love to find a flashlight in our house when they come visit. I mean, whether it's day or night, they'll find a little flashlight somewhere and they'll click it on. And it's just, it's just amazing to see that light so shine. It's just amazing, and and, and, and it is with a Christian. I mean, you know, life is not dull. We we because we have light. Light gives us uh, um, uh, strength. And power and, and it gives us uh, enthusiasm uh, that word enthusiasm means God within we have the light of Jesus within us so so we need to share that light and carry that light wherever we go uh, so that God is, is is promoted and that's what we're here to do that's what God saved us you know he saved us for his glory that's what he, he didn't have to do that at all but he does so what we need to be about is going around, facing life, facing the challenges, uh, dealing with the doubts and fears that we have and others have, but doing it in a way that people will look at us and say, man, there's something that guy or girl has that, that I'd like to have because it makes God so sweet. It makes Jesus the greatest treasure that could ever be. Uh, a, a couple that is in, in a marriage, for example, that are living uh, glory of God in that marriage and glorifying God in it, they are showing others what marriage is supposed to be like because they're showing what God is like. Um, when you face a trial or problem in your life, a, a loss, a, a lose a loved one or a hurt, or a, when you have to respond when you're criticized unjustly for something uh, and your re reputation is smeared or whatever, then, then and you react in a, in a forgiving way godly way with compassion and patience and long-suffering and goodness uh, you are then exhibiting what God is like because you're letting your light shine you see see the light uh, is what God has given us to walk by when Abraham was called out of the air of the Chaldees uh, God says he didn't tell him where to go but he says walk before me and be thou perfect in other words, God said, you walk before him because God is light. God says he's light in the word. So when we walk with God, we will have light. 
when we read God's Word and when we study God's Word and when we meditate upon God's Word, we'll have a light. That is how we let our light shine. The more of God you take in, the more illumined you're going to be and the more reflected of that light you're going to be uh, as you face the trials and temptations and the problems of life in your life. You know, when you got light, you, you always got hope. I mean, we should be the most hopeful people as Christians that, that the world is, could ever know. Even though we're living in dark times, we're here for light. I mean, that's, that's what, again, that's what our lights are for, to drive out darkness, to shine. I mean, what good, what good would a light be if you didn't shine it? What good would anybody be with, without God? I mean, but to have Jesus is to have light. You, you can't separate it. In fact, a Christian is light. We see that in the scripture. You, you don't become light. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. And you can't change that. God has made you different so that you can make a difference in whatever situation of life you have to be. Whether you just, whether it's just right in your home arena, uh, by yourself, or whatever it might be, uh, or in a public arena, whatever, it, you are light, and 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 so, so you you can't you can't quench that in in a sense of uh, uh, of taking that away. You know, Peter tried that. He tried to put his light under a bushel when Jesus was going to the cross, and he knew that. He didn't need to associate with Jesus because his own skin might be going the same direction. And you remember Jesus told him that Satan decide, has desired to sift you like wheat, uh, but when you're converted, strengthen your brethren. What Jesus is really saying is Satan desires to put your light out, to cover you up, your, your saltiness and lightness. That's what Satan wants to do to all of us. And, and so when that happens, Jesus says, when you're converted, that means he's going to do it. He's going to try it, but you're going you're gonna to be converted. See, because you're light. You know, you, you, that's light in there. You, you, there. You, you can cover it up, but it's still burning. Okay? So, so Peter did deny, you remember, but when he looked at Jesus and he saw the light of the world, he knew that, 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 that light attracts light, so to speak, and darkness flies away in the darkness of his being disobedient, of his denying Jesus. That's what looking at Jesus does. When you look at Jesus, you can't look at your sinfulness. That drives that away because he is the savior that, of the world. He's our savior. He's our remedy for that darkness. And so, so, um, and, and he cried out to Jesus. You remember in, in Jesus, he wept bitterly, Peter did, the scripture says. But he did go on and write uh, so many of the wonderful New Testament epistles that Peter, Peter did. Um, but, but to think about the light that he become because of the situation that he got into and that he figured that he, he was the, uh, he had denied the Lord. And, and he went on to feed, to feed God's sheep and to be a faithful uh, servant of God uh, in that way. And that's what the influence of it. Sometimes in our lives, there's probably cases in every life we've denied Lord, the Lord Jesus in some way. But you know, to know that he's converted us and he wouldn't let that light go out uh, should make us say, I, you know, I'm gonna serve him more uh, passionately, more vibrantly, more illuminatedly, if you can say that, than ever before because of his grace and mercy in my life. Yeah, I, I think sometimes we can cover up grace with just bad habits. You know, habits are hard to break, uh, good or bad. And, and we, if we got some bad habits around us, those bad habits can cover up the light that God has burning in our hearts and lives. And, and it's his light. It's something that he's given us and we should treat it so preciously. Because, because we need it so much. And not only do we need it, but others do too. They are people looking today for light that they just have darkness in their life and gloom and doom. And um, you know what? We have the light of life in Christ. Uh, the people that sit in darkness, one of the prophecies of our Lord, have seen a great light. Uh, from the Old Testament of the prophecy of the Messiah to his coming, 
to his birth in the in the manger at Bethlehem, to his uh, death on the cross, his resurrection, uh, his ascension, and now his intercession for us. And one day, you know, when you think about Jesus coming back, and there will need no need to be. You know, the, the Bible describes heaven as a place where you, you don't need the moon or the sun or the stars. And, and why? Because Jesus is the light. He is the light, all that we need. And he is, he's the light. You now we have light. And when you have light, you have life. And we can live that life with comfort and grace because we have the light of God in our life. So, so may the Lord help us to, to be the light of the world and to let our light so shine that others may see what God has done to us and for us, uh, that he will get the glory for it. Um, how, how the world needs that today, how we need to that. We need, all need to be reinforced. I need to see that light in you, and I want to show you that in me, that, that there is light. And, uh, and what a blessing. Just like when God created, he said, let there be light. And there was light, <clears throat> and there was, and it made all the difference in the world. Jesus makes all the difference in our lives. He makes all the difference in salvation, but also in sustaining us in our lives here. After we're saved by his grace, he sustains us and keeps us in the stretch of, uh, of ever uh, learning or yearning for that light. You know, a tree, I've noticed uh, in the woods or in the yard, a tree or a plant will grow toward the light. Uh, those sunflowers that, that we have in the garden in the summer always face the light when the sun, the, the natural sun, they'll face them. Trees grow to the light. That's how we are as Christians. We grow to the light because of the light and for the light. And uh, may God bless us to just be so thankful that Jesus is the light of the world, but, but that he has been so graciously to give us his light so that we uh, can let it shine for his glory. And that's really all we're called to do. What a blessing it is to just let our light shine. And whether that's laying on the hospital bed, you know, sometimes I think, maybe we think if we're not active and we're not strong and vibrant like we maybe are in our youth, that, that we can't be of any help or usefulness. That's not the case. Some of the most effective light shining you will do is on the beds of affliction and on the situations in life that, that inhibit your activity. I know some of the most powerful Christians I've ever visited were in hospices and hospital rooms on the sick beds of life, but they had that light. They were rejoicing in Jesus no matter what. That is what light does. I mean, you can't, you can't extinguish it and don't try to cover it up. It's just foolishness to you because, because when God saves us, it's a quickening, it's a calling out of this world. And, and that's, uh, that goes for the church too. I, I said to the congregation the other night uh, in conference, I think, uh, a while back I had a, a funeral with a former pastor of a church here in Statesboro, another denomination, and he was coming down to be a part of the funeral and he, we were in the fellowship hall and he said, he said, you know, this church, talk about the stakes for a Baptist church, said, you, you are a light. This church is a light in this community. I just remember that. What a compliment. You know, if, if people say that, and I'm saying to you, you are a light in your home, in your family, in your church, uh, in our churches. May God help us to always be lights in this world. Sit up on a hill even, uh, to shine and to do it for God's glory. That that they can see what we're doing is from God. It's about God. It is real. It is right, and uh, it is it is powerfully uh, fueled by a God. The thing about light is it costs something. That the flame always is at the cost. Of, of what the fuel is of it. it, it's not free, whether that's a natural light of a battery or electricity, whatever. What, what fuels the light of Jesus is the cross of Calvary. It cost our Lord 
his blood to become the light of the world. And so may the Lord help us to realize that if we're going to really shine, just like Jesus, it's going to cost us something. It's going to be the sacrifice you made because when it's all said and done in our lives here on earth, no matter what church you go to or how many times you did this, that, and the other, what kind of influence are you leaving for God? That's what's going to live on. Your influence, your saltiness, the light that you give us. Can't you think of others in your life, maybe your parents or grandparents or friends that have gone on to be with the Lord? Their influence is still here. And yours will be too. Because that's how powerful it is that God has given us his amazing grace in the light of our life to love him and, and, and saying this we should adjust our life to God's light and by his light not try to get him to adjust to ours um, you know I heard a, a, a story one time about a ship years ago when they used the lighthouses for directions to keep them away from the dangers at sea and the ship thought the lighthouse was another ship and so it was sending a message, the story said, as it got closer to what was actually the lighthouse, but thought was another ship. He said, please move, change your direction, of course, so many degrees. And finally, when it wasn't moving, it got a signal back from what become, it was actually the lighthouse. It says, you need to change so many degrees. And it was signed off the lighthouse. Jesus is the light. And if we find our lives getting away from the light, we need to get back on the right course. Because, you know, living a life in honesty and the reality of life, according to God's word, in prayerful, humble adoration of God, that's light. And when we get away from that, it's going to be darkness. And so we have the light. May we live our life so that as we do, we can show others how great a light Jesus really is by what we do and how we react or what we don't do in every way. May the Lord bless you. Thank you for being the light that you are. I appreciate that. I know so many other people do. Would you bow with me? Dear Lord, thank you for the beauty of this day. Thank you for being the light of the world. Help us, Lord, to shine so that others might see how great you really are. Thank you for loving us and for giving us, Lord, the light of life to walk in this poor, dark, and sinful world. We thank you for the privilege to do it, O oh God. We pray that we might illumine every part of life you give us so that others would, would know that you are a real, gracious, holy God, a Savior, a loving kindness, a forgiving a God of compassion and patience and long-suffering, and that we're trying to emulate that, being like you, oh God, because you've called us to be so. Help us not ever to cover up our light, ever to be ashamed of you, but to live for you who died for us. In Jesus' name I pray.